Peace, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Music No Industry. My name is Aquil. Turn on high frequency is what I represent. Make sense is out right now on all streaming platforms. New music will be coming out soon. Uh, links are in the, in the description box. So, today's episode is titled I Blame Drug Dealers and Strip Clubs for the Current State of Music. Why do I say that? Um. I say that because there's a lot of, oh, well, there's a popular artist right now who always talks about how they were in the drug game and pretty much use that to help fuel their career and become what they are now. Um, but prior even to his story, which could be true or false, I don't know, um, it was known in the streets that the way you clean your money up is you find legit operations, whether it be entertainment, whether it be um, real estate, whether it be, I mean, you name it, real estate, um, beauticians, so on and so forth. I talked about this in a song um, that I put out titled, Dare Program Fail, which I will put in the description box as well, or you can find on streaming platforms, it's also on YouTube. So, this is how streets cleaned up their money prior to hip-hop you know back in you know the the, the race record days people the, the mafiosos and, and those type of people they put their money in sports and, and betting and um they put their money in all kinds of things even politics in order to clean their money up um because you couldn't just get ten thousand or a hundred thousand dollars and just put it in the bank they would want to know where did you get the money from so they would find artists, they would find athletes, they would find all kinds of things to pretty much clean the money. So, why do I blame drug dealers and strip clubs? Because I, one credit I can give drug dealers, especially back in the day, is that they had an ear for talent, where even if you know the money came from nefarious means, they promoted talent. Um, it is alleged, I don't know, it's alleged that the legendary Rakim, who a lot of people got their style from, who updated the, the style of rap to be a more melodic and be a more uh, like instrument, um, was funded, you know, from street, street elements. I'll just say that, street elements. Um, there's a story out there that uh, I saw and he talks about Freeway Ricky Ross. He talks about how the, the legendary Anita Baker was brought to him. And he didn't put her on or anything, but this is before she was popular. And if you don't know, Anita Baker is one of the greatest voices of all time, uh, one of the most unique voices of all time, in my estimation. Um, but things fell through, and he wasn't able to get behind her, but he was going to pretty much fund her and be her handler. So. This happened more often than not, because if you don't know, in the music industry or entertainment industry, you need money to pretty much promote your art. Uh, no one gets on by free ride. You gotta pay to market. You gotta pay to get your music to radio stations, to DJs and record pools. Um, I remember a few years ago when blogs were big, music blogs, music sites, um, people were paying to get their music on these blogs. I don't know if World Star still. I, I mean, I, I haven't checked out World Star in years because I, I just the, the content is garbage to me. But I remember people paying thousands of dollars to get their videos on these streaming platforms or their music on these platforms, um, streaming or not. So I say to say you have to pay to play. I mean, people even pay to perform. You know. Um, People want you to pay a thousand dollars to open up for a certain artists. So you have to pay to play. Where are you getting this extra money from? You're working a basic nine to five and you're not in a career where you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars or the upper tens of thousands. Where are you getting this money from? So I say I have to say Street Element funded a lot of artists. And hey, I'm not judging. That's your thing by all means. But I noticed that over the years, it seems like the street element has lost its ear for talent, which to where they're funding, 
things that are garbage. And that leads me into the strip clubs. Now, I talked about, I talked about jazz or which comes from jizz um, music. That term was used because it was created or, or was played inside of brothel. So it's called jizz music and scatting means poop. Um, you know, ish talking, uh, which people did. It was also in jazz clubs. So, yes, this music was played in jazz clubs and, you know, it was played to, I mean, in, in, in brothels. It was played so that people could, you know, pretty much do their deed, do their thing, um, as far as, you know, sexual things go. But you see where it started or where it was played because of racial reasons, but where it grew to, where, where it grew up. Hip hop did not start inside of strip clubs, but it seems that, especially in Atlanta, um, the formula for what a popular song was, what a hit was, is Monday nights at Magic City. Um, according to the strippers, the songs that made them the most money was the songs that were be, would be taken by the major labels, by you know um, big money records and in industry, or even local big time hustlers and pretty much promote it so and put money behind so we, we come from our music you know it, it has all kinds of elements to it it's not just you know about the streets or it's not just about you know the political point or political you know rare stuff it's not just about happy go lucky having fun it has all those things but we went from having a wealth of topics to address to if it don't make strippers make money then we're not promoting it. So I say that to sum up and surmise that I blame drug dealers for funding garbage. And I've even seen this locally as far as when I was in Philly, you know, I noticed, you know, people that had money from certain means, hey, I'm not judging, you do your thing. But I noticed the artists that they were fund and they would support. And I'm like, wow, you know, I'm not hating. And I wish I had that money behind me, but because either they didn't have the ear or they didn't have the care or they were like, you know, this is going to be popular. This is what the people want right now. Or this is what the radio wants right now. It seems like drug dealers lost their ear. And strip club, if you if the chick is not making money, as far as, you know, the music goes, then it's not a hit. So, that's my opinion. What say you? I blame drug dealers and, and strip clubs for the current state of popular rap music. But let me know what you think. Leave your comments, likes, thoughts. Um, be sure to share, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.